Ooh. My one doesn't work when you try and change it. It's sort of something to do with a green screen. It didn't work for me for a long time until I, I got somebody from IT to spend an hour and eventually sorted it for me. Yeah, I think it's because they're preset to green screens and then these are the uh, iPads or the laptops and uh, then when you want to put a, another, <coughs> it's impossible. Well, mine seems to work all right, Seamus, because that's not my room I'm sitting in. <laughs> yeah, I know that. But is, is, is yours a laptop or, or a, a PC or a, an iPad? No, it's a, it's a laptop. Derek, the only um, person who's done that position um, uh, <coughs> appears to possibly be in Wales. Uh, Ian, I think we're live now. Sorry. Okay, we're well, ready to start, uh, Elaine. Okay. Do you want us okay. to all turn our pictures off? Yeah, I'm going to read out a little bit of a blurb to begin with. Okay. So I'm now formally starting the... Uh, Development Control Committee, 20th of May, and I've got a few comments to make um, to begin with. Uh, because, the, because the UK has now moved into the delay phase of the response, we'll be holding this meeting electronically in accordance with the relevant regulations. Members of the public may also attend the meeting in an electronic capacity, and there's a link on the Council's website for them to do that. Members of the Development Control Committee are asked to keep their microphones and cameras switched off until called to speak um, to indicate um, and use the chat chat function to um, to indicate to me that they want to speak. I, and I think it's a bit like using the red button when you're in the council chamber. If you use the red button when you want to speak, but if your red button's switched off, you can't speak. So treat your mute and your microphone and your camera like the red button and switch it off unless you're actually allowed to speak. Uh, officers, local members and speakers are also in attendance, but we'll keep their microphones switched off unless called to speak. Um, it's normal practice to use the chat function to vote for or against or abstain, but in addition to that, I would I will go through each member of the committee in turn in alphabetical order and ask them to to, to say out loud whether they are for or against or abstain uh, or abstain on the um, recommendation of officers, so that the members of the public who are watching on uh, in the public can actually see. Um, in the event of any connection failures. Uh, I'll have to take advice from our legal officer as to uh, uh, whether or not we're we're quarate, in which case we'll carry on. Um, and if if for any reason, because of a technical reason, for example, if you're if you're locked out of the meeting, again I'll have to take advice as to whether or not you're you're eligible to vote, because the normal rules are that you can't vote unless you attend the whole discussions. So if if for any reason you're thrown out of the meeting, we'll have to take a view as to the length of time that reason and so forth. And again, I'll take legal advice on that. OK, so we're now going to the normal chairman's announcements. If you wish any particular view to, to be recorded on an item of business, please say so and it will be recorded in the minutes. And you're reminded of an obligation to um, uh, declare interest at the start of each meeting. And also, bef before we start the meeting, I'm going to ask each of you um, to introduce yourselves. And when, when the officers speak, they will introduce themselves before they speak. Now. Just quickly go through the fact we have no membership changes, no apologies. Uh, the minutes of the meeting, are you happy for those to be signed at the next available opportunity? You better use the chat Agreed. function. Agreed. Oh, Agreed. You, you have to do that through the chat function. But I'll... Okay. Um, that seems to be universally accepted. Um, public petitions, none. Notification about the business, none. Motions, none. So what I'll go now, I'll ask each of you in turn to introduce yourselves. And unless you're speaking, can you please switch off your camera and microphone? So that applies to you, David, at the moment. David Barnard, your camera's on. Thank you. So I'll go. I'll ask David Andrews. Would you like to introduce yourself, please? Thank you, Chairman. Yes, David Andrews, member for Ware North and member of this committee. Thank you. Thank you, uh, David Barnard. Yes, uh, David Barnard, member of the committee and the uh, councillor for Hitchin Rural. Thank you, uh, Stephen Bolton. 
Uh, Stephen Bolton, uh, member for Hatfield Rural and member of this committee. Thank you. Um, Steve Drury. Yes, uh, morning, Steve Drury, member for Croxley and a member of this committee. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I don't think Credit Gordon's alive, or is she? No, she hasn't. So we're going to John Hale. Uh, John Hale, member for Kenny Heath and Marshallswick and a member of the committee. Thank you. Uh, Michael Muir. Um, Michael Muir, um, member for Bulldog uh, and part of Letchworth and vice chairman of the committee. Thank you. Uh, Seamus Quilty. Yes, I'm Seamus Quilty. I'm a county councillor for Bushy South Division. Thank you. And Andrew Williams. Hi, it's Andrew Williams. I'm a member of this committee and county councillor for Hemel Hempstead East. OK, thank you very much. The, the, there are other uh, local members who will be speaking on particular items and they, they, they will introduce themselves before they before they speak. So if we can go straight now to the um, first item on the agenda, which is it's a, a reserved matters application, uh, layout, scale, appearance and landscaping for the construction of a new sixth form of entry secondary school, car parking, cycle storage, locations, minibus drop off, playing fields, multi-use games, surface water attenuation measures and other associated developments following an outline planning permission granted on the 14th of November, reference 3 19 south of Whittington Way in Bishop Stortford and Che Dempster is the presenting officer so I'll ask Che first of all to introduce himself and then to present the case. Thank you Che. Thank you Chairman, good morning everybody. My name is Che Dempster, I'm a Principal Planning Officer for Hertfordshire County Council and the Case Officer for Item 1. If you just bear with me while I load the, uh, the presentation for you today. Are you, are you seeing in front of you the uh, the opening page for this application with a description of developments? Hopefully you're, you're seeing that. So I'll move on to... Yes, we've got that. We've got that. Thank you. So, Chairman, as you said, it's a reserved matters application covering layout, scale, appearance and landscaping for the construction of a sixth form entry secondary school that lands to the south of Whittington Way in Bishop Stortford. The application site is shown uh, in a dashed red line on the screen. It's uh, to the south of Bishop Stalford between Whittington Way and St James Way, and Obry Way is to, to the northwest of the site. Um, just to point out that the, uh, the site slopes from north to south, and the lowest part of the site is in, in, in the southern part of the site. The application site was within the Metropolitan Greenbelt prior to the adoption of East Hart's local plan or district plan in 2018 and the site was allocated for development uh, of up to 750 homes, employment land, schools, uh, so employment use and other related development. And, um, and sustainable drainage. So policy BISH5 of the Bishops of the East Heights local plan um, requires development of a master plan for Bishop Stortford South to be prepared collaboratively, collaboratively with key stakeholders and that was adopted by East Hearts Council in 2019 and there are a couple of key principles um, forming part of the master plan which is set out there. And one of those principles is to have primary schools at the centre of the Bishop Stortford South development to form a, uh, uh, an education campus uh, to include a primary school and a secondary school. And on the screen, you'll see um, the location of the school buildings, which are indicated in the southern part of the site on, on the lowest part of, of the site there. Just a brief introduction to the history of the site. Um, the, the, the slide you see shows uh, the site location outlined in red 
for an application that's been granted. Hey, hey, I, I, I can still only see the very first slide. I can't see the whole list, the, the whole sequence of slides that you're presenting. OK, uh, I'll have to end the slideshow and try and start again. Let me just um, try to load, load it again. Bear with me a second, please. Just try and um, bring this, the slide, the presentation back in for you, uh, for everybody to see. Chair, I'm showing you the the opening slide as we move through. Are you seeing the uh, the following slides or just the? Yes, opening? I am. Yes. Your Honour, okay, thank you. So I was just describing the master plan framework, which hopefully you can see on your screens, which shows the um, the, the schools in the centre of the sites, uh, the secondary school to the west and the primary school to, um, to, to, to the east of the secondary school, adjoining a, uh, a central spine road running north to south. So just uh, by way of background to so the planning history of the site, East Hearts District Council granted outline planning permission. Um, it's actually a hybrid planning application granting full permission for 142 dwellings in zone A, a north to south primary route, and outline uh, permission for approximately 608 homes, employment land and a local centre. And that's shown, the application site boundary is shown on the, uh, the screen there, outlined in red. Uh, secondary to uh, that, uh, this council granted outline planning permission for uh, the construction of sixth form entry primary, uh, sorry, secondary school. Um, and that included full planning permission for the highways and associated infrastructure. Um, I'll just go into show you a little bit more detail of the, uh, the site. Uh, the outline planning permission shows the secondary school site outlined in black and the highway infrastructure outlined in red. And if you can see the points on the screen, it shows um, the, the North to South Spine Road, a new roundabout on St James Way, a new roundabout on Whittington Way, and pedestrian crossing points on uh, Whittington Way, uh, and, and two, two crossing points on Whittington Way. A couple of points to note, um, the Bishop Stortford High School current site on London Road is shown to the north, a short distance from the application site with, with its playing fields. There is a separate application uh, for redevelopment of that site, which is with East Arts Council and is being considered at this time. Uh, one other point to mention is the location of um, a road called Pig Lane, or a couple of junctions actually. Pig Lane Junction with London Road, uh, the junction of Whittington Way with London Road. And lastly, on the, the planning background, um, the council has received an application to discharge a number of planning conditions attached to the outline permission, uh, a number of pre-commencement conditions which are being considered and are out to consultation currently. Um, so if planning permission is granted for the reserve matters application today, it could be possible to move forward with the construction of the school beginning in, in June 2020. So as I've said, this is a reserve matters application, firstly covering the layout, um, a couple of key points, there's a main access uh, spine. The main access is via the, the spine road. There's an access road running through the site. There's a pickup point at the site entrance. Uh, the car park is adjacent to the sports hall. The playing fields are in the north and the school buildings in the south on the lowest part of the site. And the, 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 the application is based on uh, the building model being based on a street and finger layout, which I'll show you in a moment. So the outline permission granted was for the secondary school at six forms of entry with potential uh, to expand to eight forms of entry. And I'll just zoom in on the screen. 
and you should be able to see the street and finger model layout with a central uh, services uh, part of the building with uh, blocks attached to it for each of the individual faculties. The, the sports hall is located uh, to the west of the, the school building and the playing fields, an artificial running track, um, a three generation uh, football pitch and rugby pitch and two multi-use games areas to the north of the school buildings. The application that we have before us now, the reserve matters application by comparison, closely follows the outline permission that's been granted with the street and fingers model with the uh, building in the same location, the southern part of the site. The car park is slightly reduced because the, uh, there are no conference facilities proposed at this stage and all of the playing fields are proposed to be grass playing fields at this stage. Um, there is a plan in the later phases for those to be artificial three generation surfaces. And the application includes a phasing plan which shows uh, those elements of the development which will come later. So you can see there's the uh, potential expansion of the school building, uh, labelled five. And there's the potential uh, lecture theatres to the north and south of the, uh, the sports hall and a car park extension if, if that's required. And also the 3G pitches and artificial running track um, should that be required by the school. And it's proposed that the school will move forward with these phases between 2022 and 2028 and further applications will be required in due course. Uh, moving to scale, the building height is a maximum of three storeys and is below the 80 metres uh, above ordinance datum, which is set um, by the Bishop's Orford Master Plan. The floor plan has been reduced, or the floor space has been reduced compared to the outline. Um, the, the layout reduces the, uh, the building mass uh, rather than having one large block. It's broken into individual parts, individual elements and the car park is some 144 spaces. So these sketches show the north and south elevation showing the, uh, the height of the building. So from the south, you can see the full three storeys of the building. From the north, you'll see the building is two storeys um, where uh, the lower storeys cut into, cut into the ground. And also you can see the, uh, the east and west elevation showing the courtyards uh, with the curtain wall glazing and the staircases and um, the, the west elevation showing uh, the cut through with the, uh, the sports hall omitted. Moving on to the appearance of the building, the main elevations are um, in a multi-stock brick, three different colours of brick are used with detailed banding um, to show some uh, greater interest in the building. The doors, windows and louvers are all grey powder coated aluminium frame and there's the glass curtain walling and the, uh, the sports hall in particular has a uh, rain screen cladding with three uh, complementary colours. Here's a, a photo montage indicating the, the main entrance uh, to the south, showing uh, the, uh, the windows are uh, covered above by a breeze soleil to introduce some solar, um, some solar screening. And you can see there some of the detail around the entrance. The next slide shows the sports hall with the, uh, the rain screen uh, at the upper level with the, uh, the different colours to, to add some um, subtle contrast and complementary um, uh, use of colour for, for the sports hall. Uh, these slides show in greater detail the materials. So this is a palette of materials. So it shows the, the different colour bricks being used and in between windows, an example of this banding uh, with the brickwork to add some, some visual interest. And you can see in greater detail on the right hand side of the slide the, the rain screen that's proposed for the sports hall. Uh, these um, slides shows the detail of the, uh, the courtyards. So again shows the detailed banding on the brickwork and uh, the rain screen, sorry, the, uh, the curtain wall glazing. I uh, should just mention sustainable design as it's been a matter of great interest to this committee. Um, sustainable Hertfordshire strategy adopted um, in 2020 um, sets policy objectives uh, up to 2030. Uh, those are to be carbon neutral, to have services ready for future climate change, to improve biodiversity on HCC sites by 20% uh, by 20 and to reduce landfill to, to, to zero. Uh, the application includes a number of aspects, positive aspects environmentally to include energy efficient air source heat pumps, hydrogen ready boilers, uh, 2,000 square metres of photovoltaic panels, triple glazing, 20 electrical vehicle charging points, 
solar shading, uh, landscaping, which includes pollinator species uh, and native planting. Finally, on uh, reserved matters is landscaping. There are some key aspects of um, the landscaping scheme which I would draw your attention to, and it's set out in the report uh, in section in section nine of the report. Uh, the landscaping strategy at nine three two uh, includes a substantial landscape buffer on the southern side of the access road new tree planting, uh, buffer planting, including native species around the boundary of the site, tree planting within the car park uh, to, to break up the appearance of uh, the hard surfacing, uh, canopies within the courtyards, raised planters, uh, tree planting within the courtyards, uh, and um, boundary planting around the sports pitches to include a wildflower meadow mix and pollinator species. This slide shows in detail the landscape strategy, so the playing fields to the north with the, uh, the buffer planting around the site. Uh, the next slide shows the, uh, the planting in and around the, the school building zone. Um, so you can see tree planting um, uh, around the buildings within the car park and uh, a substantial buffer around the, uh, the application site. Members, I would just really draw your attention to the content of the report and to, to, to each section. Um, uh, the planning issues are discussed, discussed from 9.1 to 9.8.6 of the report, and the report also includes uh, in Appendix 1 the planning conditions that are recommended. So, in, in summary, the, the application before you is for the um, construction of a sixth form secondary school at Bishop Stortford South, which will enable the relocation of the Bishop Stortford High School and will provide an essential part of the infrastructure required at Bishop Stortford South. It's an accessible site by pedestrian cyclists and by public transport users, and the application is consistent with the principles of the Bishop's Office South Master Plan, and also compliant with East Arts District Plan development strategy key policies. I'd also add that the proposal supports the objectives, the policy objectives for the sustainable Hertfordshire strategy adopted by this council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Jenny. Um, uh, if you can indicate whether or not you want to speak by using the chat function. Uh, Graham McAndrew is the local member. I believe you want to speak. Yeah, if, if I can just say a few words, Chairman. Uh, I'm the local member for Shipstart of uh, Rural. This falls off of my vision. I must declare that I'm also a governor of the Bishop Sartford High School. I was going to. I'm sorry, could I, could I interrupt him? Because I can't hear a thing. It's all echoing. Yeah, I've got a similar problem. The, the, I, I, I've, I've got a strange screen. I'd, Shay, have you managed to completely reverse your uh, control of the picture? Yes, Chair. Yes, Joe, I've, I've, I've stopped sharing the, the presentation. OK, thank you. Should I carry on? Now, I think we're still right now, Graham. Thank you, Karen. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, I'm Graham McAndrew, the uh, member for Bishop Stockford Rural. I was going to be, and also governor of the Bishop Stockford High School, I was going to be speaking on the sustainability and how impressive I think that the development actually is, but uh, Che did a very good job with his slide on sustainability and the, uh, Hart, the sustainable Hartford strategy. There is one area that I have got uh, concern on. That's page 29 and it's under conditions 3P, which is about vehicles when they're on site coming off and being cleaned. <clears throat> within Bishop Stortford, it's now basically an area that's within a huge development site from the A10 right through to the bypass uh, to Southside Airport and London Road in the south where the site is. Uh, the police have been involved for the past couple of years with uh, over 100 broken windscreens reported to them through chippings coming off the road and breaking the windscreens. And that's only the ones that's reported to the police. 
I've been in contact with the A120 bypass, uh, the agricultural mineral quarry adjacent to the site and various other developers. And what I would ask is that uh, prior to commencing any work, should this uh, application be passed, that the developer actually looks at the roads round about to make sure they're up to the standard they should be and they uh, keep it to that standard. These hearts uh, in the next couple of weeks, instead of doing a 13 week frequency road sweep, will be doing a six weekly road sweep. So I just wanted to sort of bring that to the fore. Uh, I don't see a problem because I imagine that they, like other developers, will be quite good at that. But uh, that's my only point. But I do support the application, Chairman. OK, thank you, Graham. Chair, do you or one of the highways officers want to respond to that? Thank you, Chair. Um, so the condition, the construction management plan condition that the Council McAndrews mentioned is intended to provide for um, vehicle routing and safe access to the site uh, and to include siting of wheel washing facilities and, um, and uh, measures to, to keep the, the road free of, of, of debris. Um, if there, is, if there is a local issue with the condition of the road, um, there's a possibility that we could require a condition survey prior to the commencement of development, which is something that we do on minerals and waste sites occasionally. Um, uh, so possibly if, if there was a local concern that could be included within the condition. Um, bearing in mind the, uh, the timing, it could be uh, within three months of the commencement of development, for example, a condition survey of the road can be submitted to and then that acts as a measure against which to to um, determine any deterioration of the road over the over the project lifetime. So that's, that's an option that members could consider if it, if it was if it was thought to be necessary. Okay, thank you. Um, there are no other speakers or petitioners for this item, but we did all receive a, an email from a Mr. Arnott about concerned about the traffic implications. Chain, uh, do you feel you've addressed that already in, in your presentation or would you want to add a few more words about that? Jay? Yes, yeah, sorry Chair, my, my mic was off for a moment. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if you're able to see the uh, the letter on the screen. Um, I've tried to, to share the letter from Mr. Arnott. Members may have a copy available to them. Um, if I may just, just run through some of the main issues that, that are raised. Um, so um, this is in relation to um, the development of the school's existing site on London Road and some further highway works that were undertaken and a request from the highway authority for further uh, studies and further information on the impact on the London Road corridor primarily. Um, now, the first point I would make is that this relates to an application to be determined by, by East Hearts uh, District Council, so that they, they'll be requesting information from the highway authority. Uh, the second point is that um, the, the East Hearts permission for uh, Bishop Stortford South allowed for um, the, the relocation of Bishop Stortford High School to Bishop Stortford South and uh, accounted for an additional, num additional number of vehicles uh, generated by the school expanding to, to ATF eight forms of entry in the future. Um, so um, that, that assessment was carried out as part of um, the decision on the, uh, the East Hearts decision uh, and, and also as part of the permission that this council granted for, uh, for the construction of the school. Um, we're, we're not considering the means of access um, as part of this application because it, it has already been determined. So the point I would make is that this, the points that Mr Arnott makes in his uh, representation are largely for the District Council uh, as part of their consideration and determination for the redevelopment of the school site on London Road. OK, thank you, Jay. Um, we have no other speakers, so I'll now, if members of the committee wish to speak, can you indicate on the chat? Uh, I'm still seeing your your screen. If you could um, re remove that, please. Jay. Jay, yes. Uh... Oh, yeah, that's that. It's gone now. Thank you. Yeah. 
Um, Seamus, I believe you want to ask a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to ask a question um, about biodiversity. Um, I noticed in the um, very small paragraph, um, I can't find it here. I think it was round round about um, on page twenty one, or it was nine nine dot sixty, right? It talks about um, a plan for biodiversity and that sort of thing, right? But then further down in the report, it specifically mentions that badgers will be affected during the, the building of the school. So I'm wondering uh, to myself, it doesn't specifically point out badgers, but is there, are, there, are there badgers that use that particular site on a very regular basis? And is there any um, sets there? I think it was... Hang on. I'm referring there to 10.3 on page 26, where it says temporary effects on badgers population during construction. So that seems to give you an impression that there is a badger um, issue, um, not issue, but they're there and um, they're very well protected and all the rest of it. So, so, um, but it's not mentioned anywhere else in the report. And I'm just wondering how, how, how big this badger sort of um, population is that type of thing, and how, how badly will they be affected? Thank you. Uh, Jay, do you want to respond to that? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, so this is, um, this part of the report is carried forward from the uh, the outline application to summarise all of the impacts of the development. And it does, as you rightly say, Councillor Quilty mentioned, um, temporary effects on badger populations during construction. Uh, my understanding is that that doesn't uh, relate to uh, any badger sets. Um, it's actually um, badgers moving through the site as they would do um, commuting through the site from from area to area as as, as would be normal on uh, in a rural area on, on the outside of um, on the outside of the town. But I, I don't believe that there are any uh, sets that are directly impacted by the development of the school itself. Thank you. That's okay. fine. Um, I have no nobody else indicating they want to speak. But uh, Dreda Gordon has now joined the meeting. Dredda, would you like to say a few words of introduction? Um, unfortunately, you won't be able to vote on this item, as I think you're aware. Would you like to introduce yourself, Dredda? Are you muted? Okay, I, I Dredda probably can't use the technology. So there are no other questions or comments? Oh yes, Stephen, Stephen Bolton. Thank you. Um, just to say that I'm pleased with the environmental aspects uh, of this application. Very often at this committee, we talk about the lack of environmental considerations um, and we've got, we've got PV cells and we've got all sorts of uh, elements which will exceed the um, building regulations requirements. So I'm very pleased to, to see that those have been included this time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I don't see anybody else wishing to speak, so I suggest we go straight to the vote. So as I say, what I will do is I will ask each of you in turn to say whether you approve or, or, not, or agree or do not agree or object to the officer's recommendations. But please also use the chat function because that will be a, a record. But your personal statement won't be something which the, which the general public can actually see for themselves. So I'll ask you each in turn if you can unmute your button and then say whether you approve or do not approve of this officer's recommendation. I'll start with David Andrews. Thank you, Chairman. I approve of the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Uh, David Barnard. Uh, I also approve. Thank you. Stephen Bolton. Uh, I approve the recommendation. Thank you. Steve Drury. Can you hear me, Steve? No, we'll go on to John Hale. I approve. Thank you. Michael Muir. I approve also. Thank you. Seamus Quilty. Yes, and I approve also. Thank you. And Andrew Williams. 
Yeah, I also approve. Okay, so we've we've got a clear majority there, even though Dredder was unable to vote and Steve didn't manage to uh, to vote either. So that that uh, application has been approved. So we'll now move on to the second item on the agenda, which is um, application for the change of use from B2 industrial to Sui Generis end of life vehicle dismantler at unit 16 station approach Hitchin. Uh, the presenting officer is Sharon. So Sharon, please, I'll ask you to first of all say a word of introduction about yourself and then present the case. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Good morning, uh, committee. My name is Sharon Threlfall and I'm a senior planning officer at Hertfordshire County Council. I'm just going to um, call up my uh, PowerPoint presentation. So if you just bear with me, um, you should get a white screen first off and I'll just quickly uh, scroll through it just to check that you can see what I'm what see my screen before I start presenting. So uh, you should now have the white screen with the title of the presentation. And if I scroll, can you do you now have a plan with a red line? Yes, yes, yeah. I do. OK, thank you. Sorry, my cat just jumped up. Um, right, sorry. Um, so the planning application before us is to um, for the change of use from a B2 industrial estate to a so generous end of life vehicle dismantler at unit 16 station approach in Hitchin. Um, so the first slide we have here is the red outline of, of the site. Uh, it is right next, it's right in the centre of Hitchin. Um, located within an employment area that is adjacent to the um, adjacent to the railway station. Uh, it's perhaps easier if I, whilst this shows the uh, local road network, and it's important to note that the southern red line, um, you cannot access the site from, the, from that road, that's Benslow Lane, um, that's up a sharp uh, chalk face. Um, so the only access to the site is via the um, railway station. It's easier to show this on the Google Maps. Um, so I'm just going to get my pointer. So the site is in this area here. The station and station car park is here. The A505 runs, runs to the north of the site. But there's no access along Benslow Lane at all. All of the access and egress is through these um, a private road through the station car park and then into this area here. So this area is an employment is designated as an employment site. Um, it's an industrial small industrial estate. Um, sorry, if I just go on to this. Uh, so the access point for the site is here and that in the distance is the um, railway station. Um, this, this is a nursery and then there's a series of um, gyms, uh, a lot, gyms and hairdressers, I believe it is, but there's certainly some gyms here. And then there's a yoga centre in this building here. So the picture is taken from the entrance to Unit 16. Uh, this uh, is another gym. It used to be uh, car sales. And then next door on the right hand side is a scaffolders yard. Uh, the car parking in the centre is for the shared use of all the different users of the industrial estate. Um, so moving on, this is turning around and facing into the uh, estate. And there's a series of um, Porter cabins and existing buildings with on the, on the site already. These are to be retained. Um, you've got the um, porter cabin, um, on, an office, and then a couple of existing buildings. Um, the one here, which is highlighted with the pointer, will be used for storage of of the parts for sale. And then this larger shed is a depollution shed, and that's where the vehicles will be brought in. Um, and depolluted by hand. So moving on, this is the existing shed where they'll be storing the materials and that's next to the porter cabin. This is the depollution shed um, that door raises 
and then that um, fencing is the boundary to the adjacent site and then there's an, a more open area here at the bottom of the chalk face where the applicant is proposing to store depolluted vehicles and parts um, for sale over his through his internet business. So it's pertinent to um, consider that the site did come before uh, the County Council previously in 2016, sorry, 2015, um, and it was granted permission at that time for um, end of use vehicles, um, an authorised treatment facility for end of use vehicles and the storage of scrap metals and hazardous chemicals before transportation uh, off by licensed waste carriers. So we have previously looked at this site for a very similar use. At that time, the operators, um, the previous operators were also looking at car repair um, on site. Um, the current applicant is only looking to for the treatment of the end of life vehicles. Um, so as I say, in terms of policy, this is designated um, an employment area. Um, that's within the existing local plan and the, the forthcoming or the emerging local plan is looking to retain that use as an employment area. And as such, that falls in the area of search uh, for the waste site allocations plan. Employment areas are considered um, to be um, subject to compliance with other policies are considered to be appropriate uh, for employment sites. Mm -hmm. So in terms of what the um, applicant is actually seeking to do on this site, as I say, he wants to retain all the existing buildings. I uh, just want to find, wants to retain all of the existing buildings. So this is where, this is the entrance that I showed you, the existing porter cabin, the existing storage, and this is the depollution shed. At present, this area has been cleared uh, and what he's proposing to do is bring in racking um, to store vehicles, depolluted vehicles, up to three vehicles high. So that's the only change that he's proposing to the land as you see it today. This. So the site has been vacant since um, 2018 when the previous, the, um, the applicant for the previous permission uh, relinquished their lease and it's been vacant since then. The operate, the applicant has, has done a lot of work clearing, um, clearing the site um, so that it will be suitable should planning be, permission be granted. What he's proposing is to have um, one vehicle, one possibly two, but probably just one vehicle depolluted per day. These will be insurance write-offs that are brought on on a small low loader, um, bringing these vehicles in for depollution. The vehicles need to stand on a concrete pad over a double sealed, bun uh, double, double bunded and sealed tank, and they need to settle for an hour to allow the liquids and fluids in the car to settle before they can commence the depollution process, um, which is done with handheld tools uh, within the depollution shed. By using the handheld to tools, they can maximise the amount of uh, materials that are re available for resale. Um, and the only machinery on site will be a forklift truck for the placement of the um, chassis onto the racked storage, vehicle storage, and to move um, engines and heavy, heavy parts around. So it's quite a low, low level, um, low scale, low intensity. Um, proposal. They're just looking at up to two low loaders with vehicles coming in per day um, and they're proposing to, it's very much an internet based business, it's not like your traditional end of life vehicles. Um, the applicant has two other sites um, and on those 98% of his business is driven through online sales. So it's not, they're not encouraging people to come toward to their site to look through the materials that they have on site. They drive it through the, through the internet. They have an eBay, eBay shop um, and that's where 98% of their turnover is generated from. So how they um, sell or, or, or send out the, um, the parts once they've been sold is that they would have a, car a courier to take those deliveries away. So 
the level of vehicle movements, while there will be vehicle movements associated with this, um, it's, sorry, Elaine's come up requesting control, so I'm allowing her to take control. Um, the number of vehicle movements um, that the um, development will generate is, is quite, is relatively low, um, particularly compared to the other uses on the site. Elaine, this isn't going to go into slideshow. This is how I've got it laid out for this one. Uh, I, th I think Elaine was trying to change it to slideshow. This is this is how it's been set up for this one. Um, so um, then there'll be a fortnightly tanker to remove the liquid pollutants from the site so that they're not being processed um, or, or further recycled. They're just uh, amalgamated and then taken off in a fortnightly tanker. So in terms of um, the consultation, we had um, no objections from North Hearts um, District Council. Um, they've noted the extended opening hours. So previously it was Monday to Friday um, and then Saturday mornings. And the current application is looking to work on Saturday afternoons as well. Um, this would just be for um, administrative work and it's not for the depollution process. And the applicant has explained that the DVL website that allows for the registration of depolluting depolluted vehicles isn't available to use on a Saturday. So that's not a process that they can carry out on a Saturday. So it purely be for the um, administrative uh, running of the business and sending out vehicles, uh, vehicle parts by courier. There's been no objection from environmental health in terms of noise impacts. Um, the Environment Agency have not objected, although the um, depollution process will also be subject to their permitting regulations, and that's a separate process that the applicant will need to go through. Um, highways have not objected, although they have um, what helped with the wording of a, the proposed condition, and there are no objections on flood risk grounds. Um, there were 17 consultation responses received in response to this uh, application and they were either objecting or raising concerns as laid out on page 7 and eight, uh, 7 and 8 of the um, committee report. Um, the objections, just to briefly summarise the objections, the first objection was very much about the inappropriateness of the use um, in this location. People felt that it was not um, appropriate on, on this um, next to a school, there's, there's schools up on Benzo Lane and hospital and close to residential properties. Um, I think it's important to consider that this is a designated employment land um, and that the local plan policies do look to support B1, B2 and potentially B8 uses and it's not been removed as employment land from um, the emerging local plan. So. It is a it's an accessible site and that needs to be balanced against um, the concerns about amenity. People have objected about the um, raised concerns about traffic and highways um, and I'll come on to that uh, later on in the presentation. They have raised issues about the environment, environmental impact, concerns about the handling of hazardous material. Um, and there is also the issue of the fence uh, maintenance of the fence on Benslow Lane, which I'll come to later. So in terms of the um, planning, planning issues associated with the site, as I've already addressed the appropriateness in terms of policy location, this is an employment site and therefore falls within the site allocations, waste site allocations document as a potential site um, and has to be measured against the other um, compliance with the other policies in, in both a local and um, county level of uh, the other plans. So it would be, it, this is a valid site for us to consider and it's a material consideration that we've granted planning permission for a very similar proposal in the past and that the committee felt that the controls could be applied um, to make the, to ensure that the development is acceptable in this location. Um, it also allows the reuse of a site that has been um, that has been uh, uh, has been un empty and unused for some time um, and it's very well located in terms of um, uh, primary roads in Hitchin. So moving on to highways, um, it is acknowledged that the access is through a private road through the uh, 
through the car park to the railway station. There is the car park is very heavily used by commuters, um, but there's very little we can do to improve the access as it's a private road and through through the car park and it isn't one that we can require changes to. So our way to restrict the impact and limit the impact is through the proposed condition, which looks at limiting the vehicle numbers. And as you'll see, those are very low. And we've also restricted the size to um, no more than um, 7.5 tonnes for the recovery low loader. What we're not able to control is the size of the um, tankers, which would be removing the pollutants from from the site, but we have put a condition um, limiting them to, I think it's uh, a movement every fortnight, which is what the applicant has sought. And that reflects the low intensity of, of the development. Um, so, um, and there'll be, and by not having, um, not encouraging customers to come to the site and then relying on couriers, um, that will also reduce the uh, risk of um, congestion and, and conflict with other users in both the car park and in the employment estate. Um, if you look to paragraph 7.26 of the report, it looks to um, the treatment and storage of hazardous chemicals. Um, again, as I've already I've said, that is something that's largely regulated by the Environment Agency. Uh, the storage tanks on the site are in the surface water drainage assessment. It, confirms that the tanks are sealed and double bunded and the and the li liquids will be stored in those but the um that that is a process that's regulated by the permit system um so we would rely on rely on their regulatory process processes to deal with the risk of pollution so in terms of the impact on amenity this is a material planning consideration um it is close to a residential area um, there's limited visual impact um, for, for residents, um, but on the Benslow, Benslow Lane, which runs to the south of the site, um, there are residential properties for running quite close to, to the site boundary. Um, the um, largest noise um, will be generated by the compressor, and that is within a shed within the depollution building. Um, the face of the um, the the door of the shed is facing away from those residential properties, um, but and it's not for it's not anticipated to have a noise level in excess of 67 dB. Um, that being said, we have also recommended a noise condition um, to ensure that the noise levels are acceptable, um, and that should minimise. And the use of handheld tools will also minimise the impact on on residential amenity. Um, so I think that that should satisfy that concern. Um, in terms of the fencing, uh, there is a fence that runs along here. And if I'll just switch to another slide, hopefully I can um, just pull up another slide. Can you all see that? Oh, I've got bad network quality. So let's have a look. Can you all see that? No, I've got a back. No, no. Okay, let me just try again. Can you see that? Those pictures? No. no. Oh yes, I can now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is the fence that's on Benslow Lane. Um, I'm just going to leave leave it in that version because at the moment I'm having a few issues with my with my Wi-Fi so I don't want to lose the connection. Um, this is the fence that's on the back of Benslow Lane and one of the residents um, was concerned about the maintenance because the other side of that uh, cliff, other side of that fence is the chalk face that runs around the back of the site and they were concerned about um, the safety access, safety of, of people potentially gaining access to the rear of the site and slipping down the chalk face. Um, the responsibility for maintenance of the fence is down to the, the, the freeholder in this instance, but the, the applicant and leaseholder has cleared the vegetation that was pushing against the fence and causing it to, um, to, to break open. Uh, and that fence has now been um, 
access has now been prevented to, the, to that fence now, uh, to the site through that fence. So that has been uh, reinstated and that's now a secure boundary. Um, so there is a condition proposed. Um, we can look to include that. Um, and I think that's something that, that you may want to discuss um, during the during questions. So in conclusion, um, the small scale of this, um, given the policies um, and the applications for a small scale development, which seeks to depollute one or two end of life vehicles a day using handheld tools, and this will limit the scale and intensity of the development and minimise the potential for adverse impact on the amenity of neighbouring land uses. And on that basis, it's recommended that the application is approved subject to the conditions as laid out in the committee report. Thank you very much, Sharon. Um, um, Let me just, I'm just going to try and get out of, okay. if I stop sharing now. Sorry, I've stopped sharing. Thank, thank you very much. Very much. Thank you. Um, that we have no members of the public wishing to speak, but Derek Ashley, Councillor Derek Ashley, who's a local member, I believe you want to say something, Derek. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, yes. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, my name's, uh, uh, can you hear me, by the way? Yes, I can. Uh, okay, good. Um, my name. Uh, my name is Derek Ashley. I'm the executive member for Growth Infrastructure Planning and Environment. But in this, this case, I'm speaking as the local member um, for Hitchin South. Uh, this falls within my boundary, but it does actually adjoin um, Judy Billings' boundary as the local member for Hitchin North. Um, for many years, I've regarded um, some of the activities in this site as being wholly inappropriate. And, um, um, and of course, um, when the railway abandoned the sidings here about 70 years ago, um, the planning framework there has grown uh, in an ad hoc basis with all various various uses. Um, I've got no particular objection to the leisure uses on the site, but I do have more objections to the, um, the general um, uh, employment use and indeed um, the use for um, waste operations. Now, I appreciate that, of course, um, we're on a bit of a horns of a dilemma here because, that, uh, because of the status of it in the local plan and, of course, um, the previous planning um, approval. Now, I'm hoping in time that um, uh, at some iteration of the North Hearts local plan, we can actually get this removed as um, uh, uh, um, uh, a general uh, um, employment site and have a more specific um, um, allocation on that particular site. Indeed, in the longer term, um, I would quite like to think that we could get some uh, extra car parking at the station from that site, to tell you the truth, because that is the big pressure in the area. Now, um, uh, as I say, I, I, you know, there's been a lot of objections, and I think um, just because um, over the years there have been various industrial uses on that site from the time the railways used it and there's an oil depot, etc., I don't believe necessarily we should sort of um, necessarily have this cast in stone for the future. So I do hope that through the local plan process, we can actually um, make some progress in redesignating this site. Now, I'm very pleased, um, uh, very pleased to hear the issue on, on that fence. The fence has been a bone of contention for people who, who walk up and down Benzo Lane, and that does carry a lot of pedestrian traffic to uh, um, the estate to the north and also to other estates to the south of Hitchin, because it is a it is a, a through pedestrian route to the station, mm -hmm. and, and in peak hours you'll find it carries a lot of pedestrian traffic, and there have been concerns about the state of that fence. If we are able to uh, have a condition about maintenance of that fence, uh, I would be uh, very happy because periodically open either through. Um, uh, natural wear, vandalism, all the rest of it, um, that fence has caused a, a number of um, a number of problems. Um, I think, um, uh, um, you know, speaking here as a local member, I'm trying to represent the views of the local people, and they're all quite correct. It's not a use that they want, but as I say, I recognise the the planning framework around all this. I just ho I just hope, and I would. Um, urge members of North Hearts District Council, of course, to think about the designation of this site going forward in the longer term in a future iteration of the local plan. But at the moment, as I just like to express my views that I think this is a totally unsuitable um, um, use of this site. Um, and um, 
I hope the committee can take my um, thoughts into consideration and, as I say, possibly look at a condition for that fence. Thank you, Chairman. OK, thank you, Derek. Uh, Shannon, do you want to make a comment specifically on the condition of the uh, fence? If you look to the committee report on page 18, condition 12 is proposed for the maintenance of the site boundary on Benslow Lane. So the fencing to the site southern boundary on Benslow Lane shall be maintain, maintained to prevent unauthorised access to the site. Um, we did have some discussion about how this could be enforced, given that it's the freeholders responsibility. But um, if it were necessary to take any enforcement action, um, the freeholder has a legal interest in the land. So any enforcement action would be served on both the leaseholder and the freeholder. Um, so it's, it's a reasonable condition to include. Thank you, Sharon. Um, the, um, the other point you were making Eric, was about the, the local plan, which is not within our control, and we obviously have to operate within whatever the policies we, are, we have at the moment. Do you uh, want me to absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Sharon, just, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that um, it, it is an employment um, site, and that's, that's also proposed to carry forward into the emerging local plan. So, um, the existing the existing policy from the district council is that it is an employment area and they are proposing to take that forward um certainly in the next 10 10 to 15 years and that's a decision by north hearts district council and that's what we then use to feed into the waste site allocations plan um so in policy terms it, it, it is compliant and we we would have to um look to, look to support that okay Thank you, Sharon. Um, I have David Andrews who'd like to speak, and I also have Dredda Gordon. So I'll go to David first and then Dredda. David. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I remember we've seen this site before, um, and uh, I, I'm a big fan of this approach of decommissioning vehicles. I think in the past, it, as, we, as we know, it's been a bit uh, stack them high and, um, and, and wait, for, wait for them to rust. I think this approach is, is the right one. Um, the, the, I fully understand what, uh, what what Sharon has just said, but of course, with employment land, that doesn't necessarily mean employment land or land that's been allocated for employment purposes is necessarily suitable for every kind of employment. Um, uh, and clearly, there's some work to be done, done done around that. I totally support Derek's concerns around the defence. I mean, not least the fact it's an eyesore; it hardly does the hardly does the uh, the freeholder any any benefit or flavour. Um, my major concern at this stage and my thanks to Sharon because I put put uh, some points to her yesterday and she came back very promptly for which I thank her but it's concern around pollution now I fully understand we we had this long discussion last time we discussed this site that uh, much of it falls to the EEA the environment agency and I am comforted by the fact that the the actual process will take place in a building which is double bunded that's excellent um, but there will be spillages. The nature of these vehicles is such that when they arrive, they are not intact. All manner of problems exist on these vehicles. They are leaking all kinds of fluids and what have you, both on the, on the vehicle they're on and when they arrive. And I'm not entirely sure what the, the value of having um, uh, an apron outside, which we're told is up to three metres thick. Um, but it's clear, clear from the photographs and clear from my visit that whilst it might not it might be very thick it's not intact and therefore any spills that take place will find themselves into outside of the 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 the, the, the deep pollution area will find themselves uh flowing into cracks and ultimately into the ground um and what i don't want this to be doing is contributing to a future a ground serious ground contamination issue bear in mind we're talking about mercuries we're talking about cadmiums arsenics lead you know all the things in life that we try desperately desperately hard to avoid so th that that is my ongoing concern i support the use i'm not i'd be i'd be frankly i'd be happier if it was somewhere else um but i support the the the, the broad concept of the use and that's that's the, definitely the way forward but i still retain concerns around how we uh, protect the environment because there will be incidences of liquids etc uh, escaping from these vehicles out with the bunded area. Thank you. Thank you, David. Sharon, do you want to respond to that? It does say that when when the vehicles are brought in, they're going to be they're going to be put on a pad 
with a, bund, uh, a, t a bunded tank underneath it. Um, they'll be sat on a concrete pad so that the, the liquids can settle. But we do have to rely on the Environment Agency's regulations. We shouldn't seek to replicate um, their controls. So th this will be a matter that the risk of pollution is something that we have to look to the Environment Agency to enforce. Um, I don't know if Brian Owen wants to say anything else on that one. Are you there, Brian? Um, I, I think the only thing that, that, that I want to add is that, yes, this site was originally a, a, a sort of constructed as a, a, an oil uh, distribution depot. So um, it, 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 it has been sort of built uh, with um, containment of pollution in mind. And uh, we have an existing use on the site, which uh, is, is a lawful use for um, vehicle maintenance, although that's um, sort of uh, fallen, fallen away in the past uh, couple of years. Um, so what, what sort of Sharon's alluding to is, is that as well as um, this matter being regulated by ourselves as uh, the planning authority, um, the, the sort of detailed day-to-day uh, -day operations uh, are looked at and, and are subject to an environmental permit. And it's very much the, the, the role of the Environment Agency that they are there to sort of prevent uh, pollution and uh, risk to groundwater. So, so as well as our regulation, you'll be seeing that the, the Environment Agency, via their permit system, will be looking to, to make sure that, that the practices and the way that the, the site is uh, used uh, will be in consideration of, of any risks uh, to, to, to groundwater, as um, uh, highlighted by uh, Council, Councillor Andrews there. So I think that's, that's all that I'd like to, to, to add there. OK, thank you, Brian. Um, Dredda, you had some questions. Oh, sorry, David, you want to come back on that before I go to Dredda? David, you want to respond? Yes, please, uh, <clears throat> if I may. Yeah, I, I fully appreciate that. We, we, we discussed this considerably some years ago when it came to us before. But I, you see, I don't take any comfort from statements at 7.27, where it says um, that, that, that it benefits from a concrete standing, hard standing up to three metres in depth and an oil interceptor system which filters oils and chemicals from water. An oil interceptor does not filter chemicals from water. It doesn't take out the heavy metals. It doesn't take out the acids. It doesn't take out a multitude of things. What it will do is separate things um, uh, on the basis of, literally of oil and water. In other words, the oil will sit on the top and the water will flow to the bottom. Um, uh, the other stuff will go into that soak away uh, uh, un untreated. Fully accept it's not, not our part of ship. Fully accept that the the regulatory authority for that is the Environment Agency. I just want to flag up my personal concern, and possibly it may well be the concern of the committee more widely, that that, that feature is in and of itself is probably not sufficient. Thank you. David, would you like that comment well, to be associated with your name in the in the minutes? Yes, please. OK. Well, I, can, 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 I, can I say that? To, uh, OK, so we, 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 we've got a note of, of, of what Councillor Andrews has just said, um, the, the Environment Agency haven't granted the permit, haven't uh, got to that place in their processes. So let's take what Councillor Andrew has said and let's write to the Environment Agency to highlight those concerns. So his concerns are brought forward and are, are part of that, that process. And, and we're, we're, we're happy to do that. OK, thank you, Brian. Um, and, and as I said, they, that, that point will be reflected in the minutes. Thank you, Elaine. So, uh, Dredda, did you have some questions? Are you now with us? You're, you're muted, Dredda. I can't hear you. No. No, you, you, have, to un, you have to click on your mute button and un unmute it. I'm sorry, Dredda, but we still can't hear you. We can see you, but I can't hear you. OK, would you like to put a summary of your comments in the chat function? Thank you. 
Okay, while, while, while Dreda does that, because we're having trouble hearing her, um, any, anybody else wish to make a comment? No. Uh, so we'll, we'll go through to the officer's recommendations, um, which is that the uh, Director of Environment and Infrastructure should be authorised to grant planning permission subject to the 13 conditions. So, sorry, can I, could I just... Could I just sort of add in with the, the, the was um, discussion about a, an amended uh, condition with yeah. respect to uh, traffic to movements yeah. and uh, members will have had that condition circulated to you uh, via email. So I just wonder if we can say uh, the recommendation is as per the, the, the committee paper with the amended condition as circulated to members and the difference therein is that um, in consideration of um, allowing employees at the um, end of life vehicle facility to sort of go off site during lunch, that there will be an exception for 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 that uh, that that uh, number of movements. So there's a restriction on vehicle movement as per the order paper, with the exception that uh, for the two hours uh, during lunch time. Uh, we won't be counting the, the the movement of sort of personal vehicles. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Interrupt. That, yeah. that, that, that variation of condition seven was emailed to everybody. It does appear in the order paper. But I now, sorry, before we go to the, to the vote, I now have Dredda's comments, which is that she, to say that she agrees with David about the apparent lack of evidence for what the pollution that the operation will cause. And has a query about the hours of opening and uh, but, uh, Conditions, uh, something about condition of having a green extra day. Yeah, Sharon. Yes, can it's. You, um, <clears throat> I'm not able to answer the question about pollution. We've we've, we've ex discussed um, that that would fall under the per permitting system. Um, the extra hour, the hours of opening. The applicant has looked to open until 6 p.m. Monday to Friday, um, whereas the previous uh, application by a different operator. Um, looked to open until 5 p.m. So they are looking for an extra hour um, till f between 5 and 6 p.m. Monday to Friday. Okay, thank you, Sharon. Um, I don't know if case, Dredda, uh, Dredda wants to come back on that. Is she? Dredda, she can, you, can you type into chat whether you are happy with that or you want, want to further ask a question? We'll wait a little while for Dredda to do that if she wants to. I, I can't see any response from Dredda on the chat function. So we, we'll move to the, um, the recommendations then, which is that the Director of Environment and Infrastructure be authorised to grant planning permission subject to those 13 conditions with the condition seven modified on the way that Brian has indicated that was circulated to people earlier and it does appear in the order paper. So on that basis, um, again, if you can use the chat function to say whether you approve or not of this planning application, I, I will also ask you individually in alphabetical order to say out loud what whether you approve or not. So I'll start with David Andrews. David. I approve, Chairman. Thank you. David Barnard. Yes, with the uh, the letter to the Environment Agency as well, yeah. Thank you, that's noted. Uh, to Stephen Bolton. I approve. Thank you. Steve Drury. I approve also. Dredda, I know that we can't hear you, but perhaps you could use the chat function to say whether or not you approve of this uh, planning application. Uh, so Officer's recommendation, and uh, John Hale. I approve. Uh, I've, just, I've just seen that Dredda has said on the chat function that she does approve with the letter to the Environment Agency, which has been mentioned. Michael Muir. Michael, can you hear? I agree. Thank you. Seamus Coulty. Yeah, I approve with the letter. Thank you. And Andrew Williams. Yeah, I approve. Thank you very much. So that is unanimous that that's approved on the subject that there will be a letter to the Environment Agency expressing concerns about the pollution impact. 
so that um, uh, that recommendation has uh, that planning application has been approved. So we can now move on to item three, which is the application for the variation of uh, conditions two, nine, twelve, and twenty-six of Planning Commission Reference seven zero seven stroke zero seven two nine thirteen for a proposed sustainable energy facility comprising an advanced thermal treatment facility and anaerobic digestion facility to enable composting and treatment of commingled or source segregated municipal, commercial and industrial waste together with an eco zone comprising landscaping, ecological enhancements and flood attenuation ponds at Rattis Lane in Hoddesdon. And the um, Rob Egan is the officer, case officer. So Rob, would you like to introduce yourself and then present the case? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good morning, all. I'm Rob Egan. I'm a Principal Planning Officer at Hertfordshire County Council. Um, I, I shall just try and get the technology to work. Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay. So this application is a Section 73 application that seeks to vary four conditions relating to an extant planning permission. Um, basically, these are relatively minor changes and the application seeks to regularise a situation where the development has, has slightly varied from what was originally permitted. Um, the reason it's actually before committee is because of the constitution, which says that because this permission was subject to an EIA, then it needs to come back before the committee. Um, so plan of permission was originally granted in 2012 for a sustainable energy facility. And I'll just show you here that this is the extent of the site. It comprises two separate components. You've got an advanced thermal treatment facility here and you've got an anaerobic digestion facility here. Um, this is Ratty's Lane. For, for those that don't know it, it's, it's within the Essex Road industrial area, employment area to the east of Hoddesdon. There's the town of Hoddesdon. On this smaller inset map here with the site over here and for those that have a longer memory this site here just to the north is the site which was subject to the application by Veolia for the energy from waste plant two or three years back. The River Lee runs directly adjacent to the site on its eastern flank. So Permission was granted back in 2012. That was also subject to a Section 106 legal agreement um, with financial contributions going to highways, the Lee Valley Regional Park Authority and to the Wildlife Trust, uh, together with a lorry routing agreement. Um, there was a subsequent change to the development in 2014, which resulted in a Section 73 application again being presented before this committee and being approved. Um, if I then take you to the next slide, so the first condition that's sought to be varied is condition nine, which is that the development shall be carried out in accordance with an approved landscaping scheme. The applicant sought to keep the existing situation where a central eco zone, so this central area between the ATT plant and the AD plant consists of an eco zone where it was considered to be landscaped for the benefit of ecology. Um, this has, has grown up quite organically and the applicant sought to keep that existing situation without any further planting. Now, ultimately, we are supportive of this. Natural England make no comment on this, and the County Council's ecologist is happy also with this situation. But when coming in to try and vary this condition, we also identified as a planning authority that there were significant benefits to be made in terms of the existing planting. If I take you to a view looking south along the canal towpath, this is the anaerobic digestion primary building. And as you can see, it's quite a, a blot on the landscape. And that wasn't covered by the original landscaping scheme. So in, in liaison with our landscaping officer, we have negotiated far better benefits than the original scheme provided. So if I take you back to this map, this is the building in question here. This is the side path and the view from it. It's intended to bolster up this flank and also this flank here with additional planting and provide some additional planting just in a little gap in the fence there and provide some further attenuation planting around the surface water attenuation ponds within the site. So it's considered that these will offer significant benefits. The Canal and Rivers Trust did respond and say that they wished 
for even further planting along this eastern boundary but our landscape officer has responded and said well there's no real justification for that this will offer significant benefits in its own right um, the canal and rivers trust also wishes to see a more diverse mix of planting and this aspect of it is agreed they, they wish to see less reliance on elder which i believe will overtake everything else within the site um, so it, it is agreed that a planting mix can be thrashed out with the applicant at, at some point in the future and we were intending to vary the condition to satisfy that request and, and that should then enable a far better planting mix than was originally provided for the second condition once again the, these conditions overlap and interlink so there will be repetition condition 12 requires the management of the eco zone and all that this application seeks to do is to vary that existing condition to remove any relevant and any reference to that previously approved landscaping scheme and ultimately just put in this new landscaping scheme within the wording of that condition 12. Condition 26 is also sought to be varied, but originally uh, the application was made on the basis that they wish to remove condition 26, which is the requirement to accord with an approved surface water management scheme on the site. Um, the flood authority has responded and said that rather than deleting that condition, they wish to see the condition retained and to make reference to the 2014 surface water surface water attenuation scheme that was approved and therefore that keeps it in place in perpetuity and the applicant is happy to accept this element of it as well. Um, finally condition two is the condition that sets out all of the approved drawings it's our standard condition that makes reference to everything that's been approved when the application is made so this application purely seeks to address that by deleting references to old plans and submitting references to, to the new plans that have been agreed as part of this application. Um, in addition, there have been minor changes to the location of a Weybridge office and a bicycle shelter within the site. Um, neither of these, if I'll take you to this slide here, this is the entrance from Ratty's Lane. The site is obviously industrial in, in nature. You've got overhead aerials, overhead uh, power cables and pylons as well. Uh, this is some of the plant associated with the AD plant. The Weybridge office is seen just here um, and the bicycle shelter is just here. So they don't make any significant impact on the visual aesthetics of the site. Um, one response has been received from Nazing Parish Council and that's set out within paragraph 4.2 of the committee report where they raise concerns about air quality, noise, traffic movements. However, I'm not sure that they fully appreciate that the site is operational and has been operational for some time. So it's not really a chance to look at the principle of the development. Um, so therefore, in conclusion, it's recommended that permission is granted and that will be subject to a further deed of variation to the Section 106 agreement, just to ensure that that Section 106 agreement is forever binding on the site. Okay, thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much, Rob. Um, we have no, no other speakers, and Tim Hutchings has uh, indicated that, that he is not, has no issues with this application and he's not here. But I think David Andrews, wish you wish to make a point? Yes, if I may, Chairman, thank you very much. At this stage, may I just point out something which I, I, I admitted earlier, and that is it's, uh, I don't have a, a, a formal declaration of interest, but I, I do serve on the Lee Valley Regional Park Authority, and I, from what I can see, they weren't consulted on this, or they were, they had no. No, no adverse view. Um, the situation uh, interests me. It clearly looks like a well run. Uh, it's been there a while. It clearly looks from the photographs, if they're contemporary, looks like a well well run establishment. I entirely agree with the Canal and River Trust. Uh, the last thing we need to do is encourage elder. The damn things um, do, do 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 their own thing. I think five percent is probably probably too many because that will be fifty five percent in ten years. They 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 do uh, they do gallop away um, and volunteer left right and center condition 26 i think is very important uh, that that was a one one concern for me again dwelling on a little on what i said about the previous application um you know things do happen spillages do occur uh, flood, flood water does arrive where it shouldn't do um, and i think a, a good effective drainage system is vital given its uh, it, its proximity to to the river itself so i i totally uh, i totally support the retention of that but otherwise um I'm, I'm minded to support. Thank you. 
Okay. Thank you very much, David. Any further comments, Rob? No, no further comments on that. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 other than to say it is vital that surface water drainage scheme is maintained as the flood authority have pointed out. So yeah, that, that will provide that level of protection. Okay. I'm not seeing anybody else who wishes to make a comment. So we can go, I think, straight through to the vote, which is the recommendation is that the airport, the report recommends that planning commission be granted for the change of these conditions. So again, if you could please use the chat function to say whether you approve or not of that recommendation. And I'll go ask you each in turn to say out loud whether or not you do. So first of all, I'll again start with David Andrews. David, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I agree, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, David Barnard. Yeah, approve. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Bolton. Approve. Thank you. Steve Drury. No, no issues with me, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Dreda, if, since we can't hear you, perhaps you can make sure you use the chat function to say what your view is. Uh, John Hale. Approved. Thank you. Michael Muir. I agree. Thank you. Seamus Cruelty. I agree and I approve. Thank you. And Andrew Williams. Approved. Thank you very much. So that, uh, that item has been approved. So the Planning Commission has been approved for those variation of conditions. Uh, we have no other business and no part two business. So that brings us to the end of this development control meeting at 11.27. And I'd like to thank everybody for their patience with the IT, which I think has worked actually remarkably well this morning. And I'd like to thank the IT team and to Elaine for setting it all up so efficiently. And that brings the meeting to a close. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Well done, Chairman. Thank you. Well done, Chair. Thank you. Well done, Chair. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Superbly. Thank you very much.